Now, Andy, you've written over 12 books. I know you must be working on something new. Can you tell me about what you're currently working on? Yeah, so um, I'm excited and uh, say this with a smile because I'm the my next project that's coming out is uh, feels a little far afield for me and some of the work that I've, I've been doing, um, but actually does, if you think about it, uh, fit. And I smile because I think it's a really fun project. But I uh, just finished a book and then it'll, it'll come out uh, June 20th with uh, Convergent Press in New York City. Um, and the book is called The Grace of Dogs. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a little memoir that was very, it, it was a, a challenge to write uh, in a beautiful way. Um, it was a spiritual discipline in itself to write this book. But it's really a memoir about um, my kids um, and what it was like for our for us to put down our, our black mm -hmm. lab and what that experience was actually like. And um, it's really a journey to think of people are so connected to their dogs. Is there some kind of spiritual dynamic here? Is there is there something um, kind of spiritual? And it all goes back to this, to the day we put him down. And um, his name is Kirby, he's a black lab. We had him before our kids. And uh, when we, we took him to the vet, uh, Car, my wife and I had an argument that the dog, she thought the dog was fine. I had this deep sense that there was something wrong with, with him. She took him into the vet. She got word from the vet that he had a huge mass in his stomach and he should not be moved. So she called home to us and left the dog and went and picked us up and said, we need to go say goodbye to Kirby. So we went and we took the kids and I think my kids were eight and um, five at the time. And they got into that sterile vet's office with this dog they loved laying on the, uh, mm. the linoleum floor. And they threw themselves on that dog um, and cried and cried and cried to such an extent that the dog was immobile and the back of his leg had been shaved. They were ready to put the, um, the poison in that would, that would put him down. And they cried so hard that the, the dog's snout was just wet with tears. Mm. And they finally came in and my eight-year-old Owen threw his face in front of the dog's face and said, the last thing Kirby will see will be my face. Mm -hmm. And the poison went into his leg and you could see the life leave the dog's eyes. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't take it anymore. And so I grabbed my five-year-old and the only way I could describe it is I needed to put my feet in the grass. So I went out, walked past the parking lot and was shocked at the grief that I felt. I mean, I knew it would hurt. I love this dog, and I knew it would hurt, but the grief was so heavy. Well, what happened back in that room was an absolute holy moment that then directed me to kind of explore this book, was that uh, Owen continued to cry, didn't want to leave his dog, sitting with his mom in there, and at one moment he stood up and somehow gathered strength, and he said, Mom, I'll be right back. He went out into the lobby and got a Tixie cup full of water and a couple dog treats came back into the room, set the dog treats on the dead dog's back, went with a Dixie cup, put his finger in it, made the sign of the cross on the dog's head, mm. and then lifted his hands to heaven like a priest at the table. And I don't know if he knew what he was doing, but he's essentially giving this dog back to God. Mm. And what the book really is about is, why did that feel right? Mm. Why did that actually feel like the right thing to do? And is it possible to say that human beings have a spiritual connection to their dogs? And as I was studying this, there's this um, guy named Lorenz, this famous guy who studied um, animals. And he was the guy who actually found a way geese will imprint on you. And he was like the Dr. Doolittle of um, you know, the, uh, the early 20th century. And he has this, this line, he wrote a book about dogs, and he has this line where he says, the connection between a human and a dog is like no other. There are these, these ties between people and their dog are spiritual ties. And then he just moves on and does his science thing, but he just had that line. And when I read that, it was like mm -hmm. 3D off the page. And so this is a memoir through the experience of my kids, through children's experience again, of what is the spiritual connection with these animals? And why do people love their dogs so much? And what do dogs do for us spiritually? Mm -hmm. um, and just a way to close this out, but kind of give people a taste of what's in the book and where it goes theologically is it's really amazing. And the science is, is starting to, to look at this about how Dogs are the only animals that are um, deeply, deeply connected to our face and read our gestures and are aware of our face. Wolves don't do it. Uh, great apes don't do it. But they actually, dogs are intuitively able to read our gestures and want to, want to, to almost mm -hmm. lap up our communication. 
And that just has such spiritual overtones of face and encounter through the Jewish and the Christian tradition. So that's really what the book is about.